we are doing a little bit of scouting August I uh, actually got antelope and elk on the brain not whitetail but I know I'm gonna be gone so much elk hunting and mule deer hunting that by the time our late season deer opens up here in Washington I don't want to be like scrambling for spots so I'm headed to my first spot it's a public land spot it's a it's a mountain buck situation it's an e-bike deal It's heavily hiked, recreated, and mountain biked. So I'm gonna use the e-bike. I'm gonna get back in here, put some feet out, get a stealth 4K camera out, investigate. Gotta go get a camera out there. So I'm gonna drop some feed. There's bears in the area and all that kind of jazz. And actually bear opens up August 1st in Washington, but it's just not a priority for me right now. I gotta go check out this spot. Last year, this, this spot uh, just didn't produce any shooter bucks. And it's kind of like on a three, four year cycle. So I've killed two for me. 150 class bucks public land and about three years apart and it's been a two years so this will be the third year so we'll see if we can cycle in a new shooter and both times I've killed these bucks midday like you know they're out scent checking so I like to get my stand near areas where does will kind of be bedded in the general area where a buck can cruise by and scent check and so gotta find funnels and gotta find areas where does would like to bed and I'm looking for a community scrape or a rub line as well. I'm gonna go check it all out and hustle because uh, that's, our, that's our love language, come with us. So you see this ridge right there where it shelves out? I put a camera on there several years ago and I got lucky. I put it on a tree off of it, pointing at a tree that I did not know was a bear rub tree. And so any bear that cruises that ridge will stop and rub that tree. I'll show you some clips. And I left that camera soak for quite a few years and I'd always get people hiking it even though it's not a trail. So one ridge over, one ridge over, way harder to get to. There's gotta be a big buck in here. We're definitely not on a hiking trail anymore. And we're almost on the shelf of this ridge. I wanna see how open it is. Um, I'm glad I picked one of the hottest days of the year to do this. Today the high is 103. Okay, we're on a shelf. I don't think the wind would swirl much. I think you got your prevailing. It's gonna come this way out of the southwest, out of the west. And so we want our animals to use this funnel ridge. You can see this dirt spot. We're gonna put the camera right there. Sun should set over there, so we shouldn't have too many issues with getting it blown out. All right, so we've got 55 pounds of sweet feed cob mix, but we should be able to get some inventory on some velvet bucks, see who's in here and get some inventory. I'd like to find areas where it doesn't matter if you're baiting or not. It's a pinch point, it's a corridor, it's a travel route. Big bucks are gonna cruise. It's away from people. I don't know, I might do a ground blind set here. I also might do a tree stand. I'm leaning towards ground blind because it's historically really cold. And I, uh, I can run a little buddy heater in my ground blind so I can pack a ground blind. And I also can get uh, my dad's horses in here if we want to pack in, you know, whatever, a couple bags of sweet feet or whatever, or a compressed bell of alfalfa.
alluded to that uh, first trail camera I put out. So came back to the truck, got another bag of feed and salt, put uh, the salt over by an awesome game trail. Double checked my bear tree stand, wallow, and I rode over here and I'm hiking in 55 pounds of cob. And I've already hiked 55 pounds of cob up here once from the e-bike. This time I got the e-bike a lot closer. I came a different way. And gotta get to the top of this mountain. And it's the hottest day of the year. It's supposed to be 103. It's gotta be in the 90s right now. It's almost lunchtime. So catch up with you guys when we get to where we need to get. Some dark north facing timber pops me right up on this ridge. Okay, we made it back to the first camera. That's what 110 pounds of sweet feed looks like. Good backpack training. Love this bench. Can't wait to see what we can get here. Now, bikes down there. The first time I came that way, this way is better for sure. So it's still not easy to get to. I think this could be a winner. This is gonna be a ground blind set for sure. I won't be back for probably three and a half months. Obviously that's not enough to feed, but it should be enough to see who lives here. Who lives here? Do you wanna hang out in November? Okay, so we found a better way to get to this spot and it's still hard as heck. And it's not cleared out, there's not human traffic. We're on public land. This is awesome, I'm hopeful. So, total of, we got a camera on the bear tree stand wallow. I call it that because the bears, for whatever reason, wallow there. I've seen elk and uh, I've killed a couple of big mountain bucks off that stand, but there's a lot of human traffic over there. And then, found a really good game trail half the distance between this ridge and that ridge put some salt and a camera out there just for inventory and hauled in 110 pounds that's two loads of cob sweet feed 55 pounds each um so the e-bike got to work out my legs got to work out plus i did that workout this morning and we're scouting i just figured i would show you guys like what i do for scouting what i do behind the scenes i'm always scheming always working on figuring out critters and figuring out remote places and hard to reach to. And, and I'm trying to find a big 150 plus mountain buck and they're hard to come by. I haven't killed anything over 150 and I would love to do it on public land, especially. All right, guys, we're back to the e-bike. We're gonna ride out. We're gonna catch you on the next one. What's up guys? We've had a lot of requests to go over e-bikes on the channel. So we're going to do that today. We're going to talk about e-bikes and I'm going to show you my slick setup for how I combine an ATV and an e-bike to my arsenal for elk hunting. Come along. This is the mule. It's a thousand water. It's one of those mid chain drive motors. And I can run a long ways on one battery, but I have an extra battery in the saddle there. As far as maintenance on this thing, it's super mountain bike ish. Keep the chain lubed and tight. It's got a headlamp that comes with it. I've added two additional, I like it bright. And uh, it's got this awesome display that will tell you your speed. And then you have buttons right here. So this is your throttle. This what, you know, changes the class of the bike immediately. So you have to, I'll post the classes in the lower thirds, class one, class two, class three, but this has the throttle. And then you have up to five going up, five being the most help on pedal assist. It's got trip, it can track your miles, all that jazz. Over here is gears one through nine. 
your granny gears are down here. I usually keep it at a one or two. Seems like most of the mountains are, you know, pretty much require that. I would say this is not a dirt bike. This is not a mountain bike. This is kind of a hybrid between the two. Don't expect to go up single track dirt bike trails and just throttle your way through. You'll burn out the battery. If I throttle, it's because um, it's a steep, steep hill and I just need to get up it. But if it's a gradual grade, I'll just pedal. The thing is absolutely silent. So when you're riding it, it's freaky how you can literally see animals you would not have seen if you're on a dirt bike or ATV. Now we're gonna show you what we did custom wise to my ATV to be able to do this dual threat combo. This is Jake Webb. You've seen him on the channel before. Okay. So this basically is a dirt bike mount from Harbor Freight. You can pick these up for- 119 and if you get it on sale, you get it for like, I think I got it for 89. The deal is this one is mostly aluminum here, so we're saving weight. Spin this, this comes off. Loose in here. This is your ramp. So for the dirt bike, bigger stuff, you're gonna put this on the side. You can ride your bike up. E-bike, we're just gonna pick it up and manhandle it. I might there. take that off, honestly. Yeah. I don't need extra weight on the back end already. For sure. You're gonna put ratchet straps here. You got two more points here. So you're gonna get four straps on your bike, get that thing pretty secure. Um, so show them what so my ATV did not come with a receiver. So what we did is we took those two bolts off underneath that plate and this whole tongue, I would call it like a tongue plate. What would you call it? Yeah. So this is originally just a plate with a hole in it. And most guys will put like just a receiver ball in there just to pull little trailers around. Um, what Dan did is he picked this. This is a receiver hitch extension. So 50 bucks at uh, your local big, uh, big R or what's the name of ours? North 40. North 40. We paid retail 50 bucks for that. So basically what we did is we got receiver hitch extension, welded that on to his brace here. And what we did is there's, you can see there's welds here up on the top. There's also a plate on the bottom that's welded. So this thing is not gonna snap off at all. It's rigid top and bottom. So now we have one more customization. Go ahead and pull that out of the, the receiver a second so people can see. So that has two holes in it and I'm campaigning to get rid of some of this to get this unit as close to the ATV as possible so we don't have front tires off the ground. So Jake and I are gonna cut that using an angle grinder and then we'll smooth it out and that'll get this piece closer to the ATV and then we're gonna put the ATV, um, pull it out, put the bike on, strap it down and test it. Hunting application, check this out. So imagine you get to a gate and you're like, man, that gate is, that gate's locked, but it allows motorized vehicles. But my, I can't get my ATV around. That happens to me a lot. Park the ATV, get on the e-bike, which I prefer an e-bike over the ATV all day, every day. It's just silent. You can actually bugle off that and you're not, you no one will even know that you're on a machine. And it's just quiet and efficient. These are not set up for the wilderness. You do not take these into wilderness. That is not cool. Follow the rules. You know, BLM's a lot more liberal than say national forest or state land. So just know your rules and know that they're always changing. Um, I'll drop in the show notes, uh, some links for you to check your rules, make sure you're legal, be ethical. Don't be that guy. But, um, haters are going to hate. These are expensive. And so people that, you know, don't make it happen for themselves are going to be haters. I get that. I was a hater till I finally got one pretty good money spent. And, uh, so, it's awesome. And I have a discount code actually with this company. I've talked to them and we have a $400 discount code. Check the show notes. I'll put those in the video description. You ready? Let's do this. All right, let's roll. We're at five and a half to the center, this pin to the end here. So we need to figure out from this center to that center, what we got to trim here. So this will fit. I'm going to mark five and a half, all this extra. This is what needs to be cut off. But if you went off the outside of here, you're guessing about two inches or so. But this piece of flat bar or square stock is welded inside here, so we need some play. So we're gonna cut off close to two and three quarter, three inches. His name's on his. Right here. Oh, let Except me see. Where's my metal one? That's way better. Uh, yeah. I have a metal one at home too, and I couldn't find it. So I don't know That's where weird. ours is. Someone's going around stealing metal squares. <laughs>
did something right. We just ran ratchet from the handle down to these clips. So you want one on each side of the handle. And then on the back side, same deal. We went right here to there and matched it up on this side. There's actually a nice little place. Here, I'll show you. There's a nice little place right there to ratchet. And then this is the most important ratchet for us is we went two around the basket in the back, which is why I like Hondas. They're not plastic. And that kind of elevated it up, if you will. So let's test drive it. Jake Webb, thanks for your help. You always need to have a good friend that's a welder. That guy's got my back. Uh, the Honda, it's a 420, it's not a giant one. The weight of the bike's not pushing it back. It's riding great. And we're gonna be able to utilize the ATV, get the e-bike off and, and hunt. Spring bear, fall elk, potentially mule deer. BLM's pretty friendly to e-bikes. Other places, not so much. Know your regulations. Check out Baku. Baku, thanks for your support for the Elk Shape brand. Catch you on the next one.